Hey, we're getting right into the material. We are deciding what career and what job are right for me, how to choose a career. We're getting right into the material. We're going deep today. Let's get to the show. Okay, so I have 10 steps on how to choose a career, how to choose a job, and what <laughs> career and job is right for me. And so it's in order. So let's start with um, number one, and this is order of importance. Pray fast and read your Bible. And so when it comes to our purpose in life, we can find it through revelation. This is by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is called a helper, an advocate, and a teacher. So how better <laughs> to define and um, describe your own life than the author and the, your own creator and maker doing it for you. So as you um, pray, um, seek the Lord and fast, you're actually able to hear better by reading his word and you get the spirit of revelation because in the Bible is all the spirit of wisdom coming from Christ Jesus being our Lord and Savior. And so as you read and pray, the Holy Spirit will tell you, hey, this is uh, what you're made for and who you are destined to be. Okay, so that's number one, pray, read your Bible and fast. Number two, follow grace, favor, and truthfulness. So this one I mean by grace and favor, we have natural talents and we have natural abilities, right? And so we also have supernatural <laughs> abilities and talents. And so when you are following that, if you follow the streamline of success, this is most likely what you are destined and made to do. Um, example, I will watch TV and um, movies and I will always be like, hey, this could be better if you fix it in this manner, right? And so if you find wherever your office is when it comes to Ephesians uh, 4, when it comes to pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, and prophets, this is what you are made for. So this is what you are naturally gifted, supernaturally, and um, regularly, right? All right. Number three, finding a purpose in career, find the meaning of your name. What book is written about you and your life in the text? So this is in searching scriptures, but also searching your own life, all right? So in the Bible, name changes are very important. So you actually have covenant, promise, and testament in your name. So example, my name is Winston. Winston means joy stone. Even before I started my channel, I was doing comedy. Why? Because it was already destined in me. He has predestined us to good works, to uh, fulfill and will this in us. Also, my middle name means Avery. Avery means wise and counselor. And what do I do in all my videos? I teach and counsel the word of God to people. So as you look up your name, um, see the Hebrew meaning, the Aramaic main meaning in the Greek, um, because names hold weight. God already knew whoever name your parents are going to name you, okay? Number four, serve, give, and help someone who knows their purpose and develop a skill set, okay? So the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Uh, first and foremost, our first ministry is to the church. So make sure that you are planted in a good and sound Bible-believing um, church body. And as you begin to serve, you will actually develop a skill set in your service, all right? And um, it says in the Bible, those who so sparingly shall reap sparingly and those who show a lot will reap a lot so when you are actually serving the lord in church or bible study or um, discipleship groups you'll begin to get leadership roles and as you begin to have personal interactions with people you'll see what gifts are in the inside of you so no don't neglect um, the small things because all hard work yields a uh, fruit or in a harvest okay number five follow divine connections and God ordained relationships okay so 
every person that's in your life is predestined to be there um, but also giving godly wisdom to you test every spirit if it be of god so god is genuine and he has the authentic but the devil will send in a <laughs> disingenuous and a counterfeit right so not every connection is um, placed there by god because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood but we war in the spirit um supernatural things however there are divine connections when it comes to people coming into your path and in short a blessing is just a person in disguise and so all these um prayers that we are praying we have to have the spirit of revelation and wisdom to be like hey yeah god works miracles but he also works naturally through people. So um, make sure that you are stewarding your time, money, and relationships well, um, because they are God ordained and God blessed, okay? Number six, don't be lazy. The Bible says that all hard work yields a profit, but um, mere talk leads to poverty, okay? So yes, we pray, but James one um, in the book of James says like, hey, I will show you your faith by your works. So if you believe that you are supposed to be an entrepreneur or something creative or something not in the mainstream, you cannot be called and lazy. You have to work and go. And so, yes, you can believe something as of God, but make sure it's not just a hobby. Make sure that you have mission and vision. Um, and it says like, hey, um, write the vision and make it plain that those who follow you can follow after. So if you truly believe that God created you to do this stuff, actually put some merit and some fruit and work ethic behind whatever you're trying to do. Don't just be in talk, actually have action behind it, okay? So number seven, it says to seek godly counsel. So if you actually don't know what your skill sets are or your gifting or what you're passionate about, that's a great way to follow um, what you think is your um, calling, what grieves your heart, what do you become impassioned about ask other people what you get impassioned about godly counsel when it comes to your pastor spiritual leadership and um, even supernatural prophets that will come upon your path and just say a pretty uh, prophetic word but naturally your friendships your relationships and people you have bible study with allow them to speak prophetically into your life but make sure <laughs> um, it comes from wise counsel. A lot of people just give you ideas, but if they're not God ordained, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so number eight, make a decision in faith and commit your work unto the Lord and do everything in his name and in his glory. Okay, so in the book of James, it says that anything not done in faith is sin. Um, Proverbs 16 says, commit your ways unto the Lord and he will establish your works. And then 1 Corinthians 10 says, um, do everything to the glory of God. Okay. So if you're a janitor, if you're a teacher, whatever you do, do it in faith and move. Sometimes um, we are so burdened to try to get it right. We don't do anything at all. Hey, how about you just say like, hey, Lord, I'm going to do this. Um, until you say otherwise, and as I commit to your work, you will establish me. And um, God's sovereign. He's in and around and through everything. So he will adjust us just like GPS, God's positioning system. Okay. Number nine, go out into all the world and make disciples. This is the great commission of Matthew 28. We all literally have the same purpose. We are called to preach the gospel to all people in all nations, um, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you are doing nothing else, tell somebody about Jesus. Tell someone um, your testimony and um, preach the word and teach them the word of God so they um, just know who he is. And what you will have is divine appointment um, coming out by you just doing um, the minimum. <laughs> so don't think that there is anything small, but the Lord says that he who is a good store, steward over little will be trusted with much. So yo, go out and do this um, when it comes to the works that you do. And then number 10, start and don't quit. <laughs> this is the most important part because in, um, when we get to heaven, 
the Bible says that Jesus would say to us, hey, um, well done, you, uh, <laughs> you good and faithful servant. So a lot of times the excitement of starting is greater than the fulfillment of execution. God is not going to be like, hey, good job of starting. He says, well done, well finished. Um, you good and faithful servant, okay? But he says, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. So you continued in sin and not to um, fulfill your promises, it's a sin of unbelief, all right? So that's how you find your purpose and your careers through those 10 steps. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll come back every Sunday and Wednesday with new videos. Share the video with someone. Thanks for watching.